So I, we were just seeing the clip there. I can't, mm -hmm. If you said to me, when were you on The X Factor? I'd have said, oh, three years ago. Yeah. Eight years! I know, Jane. It's, yeah, it doesn't seem like that for me, if you ask me. Uh, it, it feels about sort of four or five, because uh, so much has happened in that, in that period of time. You know, four albums, a show yeah. already. Yeah, it's your this. fourth one is out now, isn't it? Time it is. to be alive. Time to be alive. Yes, it's. And yeah. that's your, you. You talk about which you've spoken about before. You talk about your addiction mm -hmm. um, problems. Yes, you know, I think after my third album came out, I was totally burnt out, and especially. Um, in in an inspiration sense, I had no, I didn't want to regurgitate heartbreak that I would have been doing had I done yeah. you know another album off the off the fly. But I didn't think I'd find myself you know in that kind of state. If I'm honest, I didn't think that you know I would find myself in rehab of all places. But when I, don't I think did, anybody that does, do no, that, I don't. That's the thing. You know, it how, how it, oh, and it was so it's so fast. But well, surely that's it. Yeah. It's like the pros and the cons of being the winner of X Factor. And yeah. you, you felt that massively, didn't you? Absolutely, yeah. you know, it was that was such a huge year. Nearly 20 million people watched the final, yeah. you know, um, that's a third of the, the country. How yeah, do you yeah. get to that point, though, that you do sort of end up um, in rehab? You know, I, you know, I could point the finger at various things, but it's life, isn't it, at the end of the day? It's not, it wasn't my relationship, it wasn't leaving Sony, it was a culmination of everything, and that was my life, you know. My life was getting me down, I was getting stressed, I was getting depressed as... Um, so it was like sort of... Self-medicating. Absolutely, yeah. it was just escaping, you know, yeah. from how I and from how I felt. And again, like these flight mares that we yeah. talked about, that really was instrumental in me, in my. Well, you downfall. got on the wrong flight as well. well <laughs> <laughs> now, every flight's the wrong flight for me. I'm petrified flying. Really? Um, yeah, no, completely. But hence, you know, so a friend of mine, you know, suggested that I should take some Valium, and uh, you know, I was already on that slope anyway. So even when you're getting like a six a.m. flight, yeah. You're taking a, ah, but this yeah. is the thing with a drink in the morning, and then you know, this is like oh, and for the first time in my life since X Factor, I was like, I mean, I don't want to make it out like it's good. I mean, I'm, this is not, you know, but I was. <laughs> I was relaxed and happy mm. for the first time, and I was mm. like, "Oh, if that's all it takes, then fine. I, I want to, you know, I want to stay the here." The awful thing, isn't it? Because then bubble. it's the knock after that. Yeah, that's yeah. The, thing. Exactly. the terrible downer after exactly. that. That's so yeah. oh, the bubble. Was, and yeah. did you have friends and family around you, Matt, that were saying like, "You're going down a dangerous avenue"? I did, Lisa, but also I, you know, I'm quite a private person. I was very much at home on my own. You know, not many people were around me at the time. So they didn't really see what was going on. Um, my Did brother you were was quite lonely then. Oh, very. Yeah, mm. London's got. I don't know. I don't know how many million people are in London, but you know, a lot of my friends are back in Suffolk and Essex, and yeah. Yeah. being here on my own, left to my own devices, with you know. Oh, with... the greatest loneliness can be yeah. in the biggest crowd. Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. exactly that, and yeah. you know, I found I found solace in in you know, prescription drugs and alcohol, and that was that was that. But my brother knows me better than anyone, and he was the one who kind of. Grab me around the neck and said, "Like you've got to, you've got to go and sort this out." Yeah. Yeah. Where are you, you know, now on it? Are you? Do you not um, drink? Or? No, I mean, I spent 19 months in recovery. I don't didn't drink, didn't do anything. Um, that was while I was doing Memphis the musical. But I mean, I'm a heady person. I've always grown up as a very hedonistic person, you know, and I, that's how I am. I didn't feel like total abstinence was me. I couldn't really. I didn't really feel like myself. And after the buzz of Memphis every night. I was like, well, what am I going to do now? Yeah, like, that's yeah. a hard thing, I can't, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. totally sober and I've been on adrenaline for six months. I'm like, I need something. So, you know, I started to drink again and like, on, an, on, on a rational level, like we all You're should. You're in control yeah. of it. Uh, yes, yeah. that was it. I, I thought, I, you know, if I can't play with the ball, that's not control. Having no, the ball no. and being able to look after it is, is where I'm at now. Can I ask you, Matt? Can I ask you, Matt, as well? I didn't know this, that you, that you had kidney cancer when you I were 18 did, yes. months old. Yes. For me, I had no idea what was going on. Um, you know, going through chemo and losing my hair. Um, you know, I'm losing my hair again, but that's for different reasons. <laughs> because my granddad lost it. <laughs> <laughs> Your poor parents but, you know, as well. that was that was the thing. So, um, you know, my mum's a bit of a warrior, and that's where I get my. I'm not surprised. From. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Honestly, when she... you yourself have kids, yeah, you'll go. You'll have a conversation with your mum, and <laughs> you'll go, "I get it." Yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially when you're 18 months. That is a big deal. I know. Yeah, and it was um, also for my brother who was sort of 18 months older than me, so he kind of knew how ill I was, but not really the reasons behind it. But, you know, I'm, you know I was lucky to survive and I had a kidney out and it's bigger, it, you know, it's not self-aware, it doesn't have its own brain down there, but it, because it was, I was so young and small when the, the other one came out, then the other one's there, like, huge. Oh. It's like, I'll take it from here. Well, let's <laughs> hear it for your bigger <laughs> kidney. <Yeah. Yes. laughs>